The Baron is definitely my favorite Baron. I think this is my favorite because it's he's, just so disgusting. Uh, he's disgusting. It Red so... hair, barf. Oh, it's great. I know. Oh, wait a I second. know. It's always your house, Harkonnen. Yeah. I'm not house Harkonnen. <laughs> it's time to hack the movies. Hey guys, I'm here with my editor, Jessica. Hello. She's been doing a great job, but she didn't become the editing expert you know now overnight. That's right. Here's a sample of how she used to edit. <laughs> he gives, uh, what's her name, Allegra? Uh-huh. He gives her a famous, like, poem or something. Uh -huh. Oof. What helped her get better? Skillshare. That's right, she joined the online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. It was real easy. I signed up for my free trial and typed in video editing in the search bar. I joined Jordi Vanderpert's class, Advanced Video Editing, with Adobe Premiere Pro 2020, and my editing improved a great deal. Skillshare is ad-free, and there are new premium classes every week. And our international viewers will be happy to know the entire catalog has subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use this link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Join today and learn how to edit more gooder. They also have English and grammar lessons. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Oh man, you had to be there, Crystal. It was so cool. We were riding sandworms all day long. Are my eyes still blue? Anyway, oh, I'm gonna take this off. Oh, oh you broke your. No it's okay. We're not. We're we're not in the desert anymore. How are we gonna ride sandworms without our nostrils? We're, we're not. Hello, everyone. I am Tony from Hack the Movies. I'm here with my co-host Crystal and our good friend Joe Hi. from Movie Dumpster. We have black paint on our wow, face now. You guys, <laughs> look, you guys look interesting. Yeah, it's our oh, still yeah. suits. We, it's Chris, I don't know if you knew this, but uh, I got real into Dune lately. I've been yeah, bringing it up in every episode. Yeah, I, I know. You read a book. I get it. I read the book. I know. You read a book. And then I watched all three versions, and I was like, I got to do an episode. But you know it would be great? I forced two of my friends to also watch all three versions of the same story. Eh, forced is a little bit uh, excessive. So yes, Dune. They uh, released a new version of Dune last year, directed by Dennis Villeneuve. Villeneuve. Wow, you're great at pronouncing. How do you pronounce it? I have. You're asking. Oh, oh, God there damn it, it Arnold! Oh. There we go. Oh no, I fell on the ground. <laughs> Not Arnold. Dennis. Why we can't have nice things? Villeneuve. 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 Whatever. Anyway, Villeneuve. it came okay. out last year. It's being nominated for a bunch of Oscars. Obviously, David Lynch made one in the 80s yes. after Jodorowsky failed uh, and Ridley Scott failed uh, to make one. And there was also a little known made for TV sci-fi channel. Not even a little known. It was really big at the time. Really? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, there that. was so many. They played commercials for this in movie theaters. That's how big of a deal it was. Mm -hmm. Frank Herbert's Dune, the masterpiece of science fiction. Now the all-new television event, December 3rd. Only on Sci-Fi. Uh, which wow, we'll get into that. in a little bit, but yeah. um, yeah. Uh, so there's three film incarnations. Incarnate, yeah, because you can't say there's three films because the freaking miniseries is three movies. Yeah. And we're not, we're only focusing on movies based off the first book. We're not doing Children of Dune with James McAvoy. He's one of his early roles. Is he a worm in that movie? No, <laughs> oh, okay. he's Paul's son. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Maybe. so when did you guys first discover Dune before we get into this? You want to go first? Um. I, yeah, I guess because mine's easy. I always, people have told me to definitely watch the movie. They think it, I'd really, really like it. They told me to read the books. I just never did. And then all of a sudden, last year, and I was like, I kind of want to read the books. And then you said you're doing the show. And I was like, I, I was able to read 50 pages. Got that far. Woo! But yeah, I uh, 
don't recommend binge watching all of Dune <laughs> in one weekend, aka almost one day. Hey, you I had highly, time. Highly, you had time. Yeah, but I also didn't realize, hey, like once two hours and 15 minutes or 14 minutes. Which is a problem ones, for that film. <laughs> yes, I do agree. The other ones are hours and a half at least every episode. And then you got two and a half hours of the actual, of the newest one. Yes. And then you also sent me the extended cut. I was like, poof. You didn't have and to then watch I the watched extended. Midsummer within all that, which is also two and a half hours. Don't do it, guys. I was able to watch the movies multiple times. I don't know what's your problem. I, I, yeah, I did you, not plan. Well, I started the series at 11 o'clock at night and ended at four in the morning. And then oh, I went good. to sleep. Yeah. Good, good. Wait, so, yeah. You started at 11. It was a long day. So the goal, <laughs> the goal, the, the TV series, by the oh, way. Okay, I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh. not all of them, no. Oh yeah. The goal for this episode, we're gonna figure out what is the best Dune movie. We're gonna argue our points or what we think is the best Dune. In movie. parentheses, our opinions. No, it's yeah. fact. Yeah. It's fact. Yeah. It's fact. Everything I say is fact. <laughs> See, I don't. I I know what yours is because that's your stuff. What are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, don't give it away so soon. Okay. Sorry. Before I do that, I just don't know what Tony's is. Before I do that, we should probably explain what happens in this novel so everything we say makes sense after this. Give him the old rundown. I, I, I came up with a very brief summary, just a few paragraphs, not a six hour long video. Uh, here we go. Here's the story of Dune and the things you need to know. Let me know if I do a good job with this. Here we okay. go. I see that you have things spelled phonetically. Go on. I typed this on my phone, I'm sorry. <laughs> Spice is a thing that expands someone's mind, which is useful since this story is taking place in a universe where AI is banned. Spice is used by the Spacing Guild navigators to help ships travel through folded space. It also prolongs life and whatnot. And whatnot. Does Question. a lot of things. Yeah. Yes. Mutates, yeah. Yes. Yeah. House Atreides is set up by the emperor of the known universe to take over spice mining operations on Arrakis, AKA Dune. The Emperor and House Harkonnen, or Harkonnen, led by the Baron, are working together to sabotage House Atreides because the other houses favor him. The Emperor's jealous. Paul is the Duke Leto's son, and his mother, Jessica, is a Benny Gesserit who is hoping he will be the Kwisatz Haderach, a male Benny Gesserit that has mental powers that can bridge space and time. Benny Gesserits are space witches that are embedded in the Imperium. Uh, they use magic voices that can control people, and their more logical science-based counterparts uh, are the Mentats, I'm, men who take the juice of Sappho to make themselves smarter and almost human computers. It's by my will alone that I put my thoughts in motion. It's by the juice of Sappho that the thoughts acquire speed, the lips acquire stains, the stains become a warning. It's by my will alone I put my thoughts in motion. Brad Dorf says. He That's just, what the sure does. Do. Yeah. Yeah. The Atreides go to Arrakis. They try to make peace with the local inhabitants known as the Fremen. The Duke even saves people from a sandworm. Sandworms are big and they protect the spice. <laughs> and me and Joe ride them. We sure do. Sandworms are big. Yeah. The Atreides <laughs> get sentence. betrayed by their doctor who wants to use the Duke in an assassination attempt on the Baron that ultimately fails. Paul and Jessica escape their captors and Paul trips balls on spice. Mm. <laughs> They then get saved by their buddy, Duncan Idaho. Yes, that is a real name. And the Imperial planetologist, Leah Kynes, they get attacked and Duncan gets killed by soldiers and Leah gets sent to the desert and dies in a pre-spice explosion. Paul and Jessica escape again and join with the Fremen. Paul kills one of the Fremen called Jameis in a ritualistic battle. And they get accepted because Jessica can teach them space karate known as the Weirding Way. Jessica and Paul assume the role of a messiah prophecy that was planted by the space witches. His name is now Usul, a.k.a. Muadib, which is a kangaroo mouse. Yes. Yes. Two years later, Jessica is a religious leader who made her baby Alia all weird because she drank magic sandworm water. Paul has a baby with a girl named Chani. The Fremen team up with the missing Atreides refugees and use their space kung fu on the Harkonnens and the Empire. The Harkonnens kill Paul's baby... Alia kills the Baron, then Paul kills the Baron's nephew, Fade, and threatens to destroy all the spice if the guild and the emperors don't do what he says. Then he forces a princess to marry him the end. Did I cover it all? Pretty much. I yeah. left some out, but you yeah. know, it's, yeah. a, it's a very big book. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the basic gist that's of the uh, story here. That's a, that was a pretty good plot crunch. I'm actually shocked at that. You did well. Yeah. yeah. So those are our characters. Those are the story. Now let's talk about the Dune movies. Dune, yes. 1984. When did you first see this movie? 
I was a big David Lynch fan. So that's what led me down the road to Dune. And everybody was always like, that movie sucks. Yeah. I watched it and I loved it. Mm. And I've watched it many, many times over the years. And we were talking before, Crystal and I, about how you need to watch this movie multiple times for it to make sense. Mm-hmm. You can't well, watch it one time and no. be like, okay, have I to, get it. You also yeah. have to hunt down the fan reconstructed version to see the proper film. But yes. That too. Yes. yes. But I mean, just in general, because the, it comes fast and hard and a lot of the Dune lore is within uh, images or mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. or a Paul's diary or, or like something he's reading or yeah. that, that's how the information comes to you. I will say, uh, when did you first see this? Friday. Okay. I saw this when I was a teen because I, I remember seeing all the stuff for the made for TV one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember being real like interested in it. I tried, I never watched it at the right time. So I was always like in the middle of a, like one of the parts and I was always confused. Uh, but I found out later on, I'm like, Oh, that was a remake. I didn't realize there was a movie, uh, a book. Uh, so I went back and I watched it on like cable one day and I went, that sucks because I was expecting Star Wars. It is not like Star Wars. No. So I didn't like it, but I was. Are you sure? I was too it's young. Not Star Wars? Well, <laughs> Frank Herbert apparently thought Star Wars borrowed a few things from him. Uh, yeah, so I didn't like it at the time. I, w- I didn't really know who Lynch was at the time. I was too young to really get it. Uh, I've now rewatched it as an adult. Mm-hmm. I have very different opinions on it. I still don't think it's a great film, and David Lynch would agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's interesting because everyone's like, oh, David Lynch, he's weird. He makes things weird. And he definitely did add weird stuff to this. But this is early in his career. Mm-hmm. He actually, and I read the book right before I watched all three of these because I, I knew the basic I want a gist. dollar for every time he says that he read the book. Yeah. <laughs> to Just his credit. And I haven't, so I'm very yeah. to his credit, to see how this he lines really up. Yeah. did try to make sense of this weird world. Yeah. He really did try, whereas you don't think that's something he would do these days. No. And then, of course, the studio was like, what the fuck? This is like three something hours. We want a two hour movie. And they chopped the shit out of it. Yeah. And it shows yes. it was already a hand me down from Jed Orowski. Yeah. You and Ridley I mean? Scott. And Ridley Scott. And Dan O'Bannon. Yeah. And H.R. Giger. And yeah. that's kind of how Alien was born. Yes. Honestly. Yes. And um, no, I really, <laughs> really enjoy the film. I think this one does the best out of all of them to put it all in one movie. Cause it is so much information. Yes. It is so hard. I can't imagine trying to do that again, all in one movie. Yeah. yeah. But I will say watching that for the first time. Yes. Yeah, super, super confusing. And I'm happy I actually read that some of the pages first. So I understood the characters. I needed to understand the characters and where they're coming from first to actually be able to even watch that for the first time. But I enjoyed it. I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. Now this is, this has one thing that, that's from the book that none of the others have. The inner monologues. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. What did you think of that? I absolutely 100% love it. This movie is super cozy and artistically pleasing. Like, the the set design, the costume design, everything about this movie is super cozy to me. For, as soon as it opens up, you get Virginia Madsen doing like, and then Arrakis was a dune, the cold dune. Which I think they added. They're like, we got to make sense of this shit. This I don't old. give a shit. I'm here for it. <laughs> I, I love it. And oh my God, uh, Kyle McLaughlin is so fucking handsome. And I love listening to him talk. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, he's like, just all the inner monologue stuff is, is, is great. This to is me. the first thing he did with Lynch, right? Um, he was like relatively I, unknown. I, I want to say, yeah. It's 84. When does The Hidden come out? The next year? I don't know. 85? I don't know. I think. When's Blue Velvet come out? That's later, right? I think that's 86. Mm. I'm probably getting it all Other wrong. people from Dune are in that, too. Yeah. There's, um, a lot of, there's a lot of people from... What did you think of the inner this? monologue in this? It took me a while to grasp it. I think it's very overloading at first. It's overwhelming. Mm. There's a lot happening, and it takes a while for you to actually dive into the movie if you've never seen it before to get what is happening. So it took me a while to hear it, understand it, and then just kind of go with the flow. I mean, I got it right away because I'm not an idiot like Crystal. (laughs) Fuck you! At least I'm not wearing a fucking stupid spandex. No, you know, I'm not supposed to react to it because I said it in my head. You can't hear it. Oh, that's right. (laughs) I can't hear it at all. It is a movie that you need to watch multiple times to actually get the full scope of it and really let it sink. But uh, to the credit... You'll never the theatrical version, the version we all know. You'll never fully get it because it's bastardized, right? Um, and then, and that the whole third act of the movie is like, all right, motherfuckers. Oh let's my go. god! Oh, everything happens. I was like, wait. I whoa. will say, yeah. 
the cast is really, really, really it's good. Star studded. Now they aged up Paul a lot. I'm okay that, with that. He's supposed to I be don't. 15. No, no, no. He's supposed to be this. To me, when I, at least like I said, reading the book and stuff like that in the first part, he to me, yeah, he seemed like a, a mature kid. Yeah. Like he cut. He understood kind of what was going on. Mm-hmm. I. I don't know if think of it more like a royalty where it's like you grow up in this atmosphere, so you automatically have this maturity. Mm-hmm. But he's still a kid, and there's still he's still learning. Like I he's obeying, like he's imbe- obeying his parents and their will and what they wish. But there's still immaturity and needs to learn. And in that move, like there's in that and the um, miniseries, he's just he's too mature, way too fast. I think he has to be though, because like before we know it, Duke Leto's dead, yeah, and he literally sure. has to take over House of Trades. Yeah. But I see what you're saying though, because it, it, it's more impactful when it is a younger actor. And I think uh, Joe Dorowski was going to have his son play mm. Paul, oh, shit. who was like what 15, which, yeah. which, which would, would be the perfect. same age. But I mean, yeah. despite the age, I think he plays him really, really well. I, he's a he's a young, handsome guy. Yeah, I yeah. like I like pretty much a bunch of the actors in this. I love. Uh, Patrick Stewart Patrick as Gurney. Stewart is <gasps> so good. Not in the mood. Mood's a thing for cattle and love play, not fighting. Uh, oh, defend yourself. I love Gurney. Gurney yeah. is great. Ex- uh, I have my opinions about the, the newest one, but yeah. I, Gurney is a great character. No, he's really, really good. Um, and Patrick Stewart just plays it. So, uh, Thufer Howat, the Mentat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Completely. Like in all these versions, minimized, but this is the only one that has the red lips. Yeah, him and I didn't he him and uh, Piter right. also have the red lips. Yeah. Uh, Which is played by Brad Dorf. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah B- B- Brad Dorf's really great in this. Brad Dorf's um, so good in this, and this is before he's even. Who, this is before he's even Chucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is Which before is, you know. <laughs> think about it. <laughs> yeah, Jorgen Prock now is Duke Leto is good. Uh, he's so he's good. really good yeah. in this. Um, I yeah, would say he. I think he's the only one. Leto. The only ones who don't really do it for me. Are um oh god what's her name as uh as Shani uh oh Sean Young yeah I love her she's not in this you know, really? you know not in this I'm not digging her in this she's kind of there her and Jessica I think are so fucking weak in this that's another thing they, they really are weak they really because like Jessica's like almost the main character after Paul in yeah. the book. Yes. I mean, it's an ensemble thing. But she, it's it's the mother. It's the yeah. mother of the... She, like, really gets kind of downgraded in this version. She's paired back a lot. She yes. cries a lot. Yeah. She yeah. cries a lot in this. And I'm sorry, for someone that's supposed to be this powerful and kicks ass like this, she's supposed to be... She's the one who taught him, Paul, all this <laughs> stuff of how to stay calm. You know, fear is the mind killer. Yeah. But yes, she just falls for it so fast. I get it. Her husband just died. No. Or not her husband, I'm sorry. Her lover. Yeah, she's well, his concubine. Her concubine. Yeah, yeah he exactly. He needed to keep his concubine. marriage open like, so he could marry so the, other, house. the other houses. Yes. Um, but he did love her. As Paul mm-hmm. also happens. I mean, but, she's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, they're uh, all gorgeous. Yeah. So all she's the also, Jessica's she, are gorgeous. She's also a the, Benny Gesserit, too. Yes. So Jessica's not great in this, but the Reverend Mother is awesome. Oh, she's She so plays good. her perfectly. <gasps> yeah, I would say uh, she, I think that one's my favorite, uh, yeah. the mother. And uh, they did the voice, the scary voice. <sighs> it's so, I think this is my favorite version of the voice, too, that we've yes. gotten in all of these. I, um, I, I, people were like, why would David Lynch do this? He's not a big sci-fi dude. Although he kind of is. There's a little bit of sci-fi in his stuff. Sure. He turned down Return of the Jedi. Why did he do this? And I think it's all the dream stuff because he's big into dreams. Yeah. And he's like, oh, this is where I can do a sci-fi thing and put weird dream shit in. And I love the visuals in it for the dreams. It's an art movie. Yeah. Okay. It there, it's very heavy art influence. So it, yeah. it, it's Lynch. You know what you're getting into. And um, yeah, like yeah. you said, it tries to tell the story. Uh, some of it. It's not the movie's fault. They cut out the Jameis fight. Mm-hmm. They the, shouldn't cut that out. That is so big. And it's such it, it, like, where it is now. So there's one good edit they did make. One good th- decision they made. They decided not to, not good, but for time reasons, they decided not to do the thing where Jessica and Paul get away and then they meet up with Liet and Duncan Ido and then they die and then they get away again. They condensed that into one scene, which mm-hmm. I thought was okay. Although it leads yeah, to a that. pretty lame Duncan Idaho. He kind of sucks in this. Uh, it, He's forgettable, and that's yeah. the problem. I get it. But, he is forgettable. But people always say, like, the movie's not like the book. The movie's not like the book. It did have stuff. It had the it Jameis did. fight, which, again, is important. In the movie, it's just like, oh, you're here now. 
here's your new name. It's like, what? Yeah. They had the water of life where they drown the worm. But, yeah. Yeah. That's, cut out. Yeah, those are two huge I'm pretty sure parts. they cut out Liat's death. It's not like it is in the book, but they cut him out because Max von Sydow, it's like, where did he go? I, well, yeah. Well, yeah. No, I, there, wasn't a, an expl- there wasn't an explosion because he dies from like a... The, the no, no, no. They, they show him die. Wait. In the theatrical version? I'm almost positive. Oh, I didn't realize that was in the theatrical version. I'm almost positive. Okay, well, it's Ma- in I could there. be getting it wrong. I was in there. It was there. a lot of Dune. I guess I'm wrong. It was a lot of Dune. Uh, and they also, cut out, Dune. they also cut out the forced marriage at the end with the Princess Irulan. Yes. They did cut. Good yeah. choice. Which, which leads to a change they made in the next one. Um, but yeah, so that was not Lynch's fault. The studio did that. Sure. By the way, Lynch is in the movie. He's the guy on the sand. Yeah. He's the guy on the... Uh, like, but what about all the spice? Spice miner. And like, damn the spice. Get, get, damn the spice, yeah. So things that he did change that I think fans might have a problem with. Spice is now the thing that bends space and time. No. It folds time. It allows the navigators to fold time. The engines fold the time. The spice, because they're not allowed to have AI because a previous civilization, they made robots that took over. Yes. The spice increases the navigator's minds Mm -hmm. and they're able to predict which they're able to navigate and predict which outcome will lead them to their destination. They're not physically folding space. The engines do that. Okay. This movie is just, they, they do it. Well, is it metaphoric because they're shooting shit out of their mouths? There's like this plasma. No, in the movie, in the movie, the movie straight up says the spice bends space and time. Yes. But uh, could it be metaphorical is what I'm saying. Speaking of navigators. No, no, no. speaking of navigators, the book doesn't show the navigators. Yeah. And two versions of these movies, they're like, we got to show it. The There's movie, no reason you have to show it. The movie shows, although there is an interesting thing. Okay. The movie shows the navigator right away. He's fucking cool, man. It's bad. It's, it's weird. a giant it's so because they're so it comes out and opens up. It's like this giant mutated baby. Yeah, yeah. This is what like, happens when you have too much spice. And yeah, the, yeah. Too so much drugs. Drugs are spice. bad. Yeah. Don't do drugs. That's <laughs> so, the whole point. But they have the these movies. interpreters that have like this giant <laughs> microphone yeah. and they speak this weird language and they're like, but, um, shit damn. So they show the navigator. They add this whole scene in the beginning that kind of spoils the whole thing that the emperor is working with the space. So the spacing guild runs everything. They have a monopoly but they're kind of like they use the emperor as like their puppet yeah so they like spoil that where they show their involvement which I was okay with I think it's just for pacing dude however apparently um, (sighs) because they do show navigators later in books and they do look like they do in the TV series after this but apparently uh, Frank Herbert when he saw this he got the idea of them like mutating more from this I guess he kind of liked that really he actually wasn't negative about this movie He's what like, was what was his criticism? No, he was like, like he's like, I wish they would have kept the banquet scene in from the book, but I understand. He's like, it basically uh, tells my story. Like he wasn't too broken up about. It. He wasn't like they ruined it. And can't. I think he might have known that they the studio forced a lot of changes. Sure. But thank you, Mr. Herbert, because I agree with you. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I get it, I get it. But the thing is, how are you able to put all of that into one movie that's a little yeah, over two hard. hours? You can't. Uh, what you call all the, the all the, pol- the 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 political stuff is like way pared down. It's like, yes. real. Yeah, it's like but, totally stripped out. That's really what the book is. And yeah. you could tell Laurentis they wanted Star Wars. Oh, dude, he fucking put that cigar in his mouth. Yeah. And he's like, come on, baby. we I just picked this up. Here we go. Dude. And, uh, yeah. I will say the language in this movie probably resembles the language in the book the most, I want to say. It's a I, little bit more on the artistic side. I sure. think the book is written beautifully. By the beautifully. way. Beautifully. And I think the language in this movie gets it more than... I think the miniseries is a little bit more blunt and the 2000, uh, the newer one, I don't think really gets the language at so, all on the artful part. So sure. most books, later editions, come with the, uh, the uh, what you would call it, the, the dictionary for the Imperium. Yeah. Uh, the language, what is it called officially? Hold it's on. the uh, the, termi- the terminology, terminology of the, the Imperium. Imperium. When that tape came out, it came with a little booklet. Because I guess people were buying the movie going, what, what the fuck are they saying? I wish I still had it. This I have like, the booklet at home. You have really the booklet cool. while well, I have the movie. And I want you guys to know that on Patreon, I will record a video of me reading the entire terminology of the oh Imperium. God, I Jesus. love it so much. You can go on Patreon right now for that. <laughs> so, a um, couple other changes. What's wrong with Gurney? The shields are almost oh. invisible in the book. They went in a very different direction. Opposite, opposite. The weird jelly polygon box. No, don't defend. 
I'm kind of into it. I it like doesn't it. even work. Like they make it like for like it's, it's clunky and stupid, it's and I like so it. Bad. You like it for eighty four. I liked it for eighty four. Would you yeah. like it now? Uh, no, because it wouldn't work. A YouTube no. channel did add these shields to the new Dune movie. Oh yeah, <gasps> oh, that's I have to see that. The corridor crew. So, uh, there's a YouTube channel that did that. It just looks so ridiculous. Well, it, it fits. It fits this style for me. Does it? Because they barely use it. They do it a couple times. I don't know. It just fits that. It, it, it's just another weird thing in this pantheon of weird fucking yeah. shit. That like all the liberties taken again with the designs of everybody, the, the heart, the Harkonnen, all of the uh, yeah. House of Trades like interiors are like fine carved wood. It's amazing. Oh no, I love the sets. No, the sets saying. are great. The yeah. costumes great. and the makeup and everything. I just I'm uh, so in love with it. The Baron is definitely my favorite Baron. I think this is my favorite because it's He's... just so just. Dis- Disgusting. Uh, he's disgusting. It Red so... hair, barf. Oh, it's great. <laughs> I know. Oh, wait a I second. know. It's always <laughs> your house, Harkonnen. Yeah, We're not house Harkonnen. <laughs> yeah. Does that, can I at least be Jessica then? I guess that. Well, I can, well I no. In this, in this movie, they don't mention that. So I fuck you. <laughs> I don't. Is Je- Jessica's not Harkonnen? No, her, uh, blood is. Her, fa- her father is from the book. Um, oh, yeah. Her grandfather blood. is. Yes, Baron Vladimir. Harkonnen yeah. is Lady Jessica's father because the Benny Jesuit have a weird breeding program, but they don't tell they don't them tell who their the father is. They, they milk everybody from each house and then they make try to get concoctions. Like the there, yeah, because yeah, yeah. they want to make the Kwisatz Haderach. Anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, the Baron is definitely grosser, and scary oh, German guy you, is. Uh, oh, scary German oh, guy is like oh you are gosh. so oh. beautiful, they my make Baron. Them, like, 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 so in the book, they're disgusting people. They're horrible people. They're oh, yeah. the Baron is a straight up cuties fan. Oh yeah, Woo! yes, he's a, yeah, he's yeah, a diddler yes. for but sure. Like, oh, but yeah. like, they're, it's just more like they're tyrannical and just they have slaves and stuff, and they're horrible to the Fremen. But in this one, they're like. Oh, I'm thirsty. I'm gonna crush a mouse and drink its juice. And <laughs> yeah. our doctors have needles in their eyes. And uh, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm in, I'm into all that stuff. Yes. And, and it's it. I think it's the only portrayal like on film of. It's not the full cutie thing, <laughs> right? But there is. Uh, a yeah, lot they didn't of, want him to like molest that dude. He kills the dude, and kills they make him. it creepy, but, and but, they make it sexual. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and later on at the famous. Because it, it's like an open secret that he's, yeah, you know, gay. Let, let's Ugh. talk about uh, the most famous Harkonnen, Fade Ratha, played by Sting. Woo, Sting. Fade. He's so fucking hot, Man, dude. I think he, I <laughs> think he is, in his little I'm undies not, later I when just, he comes I out. I saw that and I was just like, I was kind of like, ew. And then what's his like, face? I so just, nasty. What's his face from Eraserhead? Uh, Jack <laughs> Nance. Yeah, Jack there. Nance is in this, and he's just like. Ugh. Yeah, you know, doing his Jack oh, no, Nance thing. Just did not look. I'm just like, oh, just not my style. I was just I, like, ah. Oh, he's he's a, he's he's, he's, he's in like, shape. He's looking. He's good. like, yeah, but I think it's like two inch. Like, I was just like, oh, he was having the time of his life. He was. He oh, would yeah. have. He was tant- He was having tantric sex with the Baron for sure. Yeah. Yes. Whoa. Oh, so, did you ever see the made up a uh, commercial of for the Baron for the skincare? Oh no. yeah, Justin oh, showed me that yeah. the YTMD. It's pretty good. Oh my <laughs> they god! They put him in a skincare thing, and then it's like made by two doctors, and it's Fade Ratha yes. and uh, Ramon. Funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, I think had they left in the scenes that were important, fans of the book would have been more tolerable to the weird things they added, like. All right, so Thufur Howlett, when he becomes the Harkonnen's Mentat, mm-hmm. they do poison him, and they do have to administer an antivirus, or uh, what do you call it, anti-venom in him. But I don't remember it being from a cat that they need to milk that's also attached to a mouse. Yeah. that well. was. I think that was at it. But it's, it's when you take out all the real important stuff and the story becomes so disconjointed that the fans of the book, they're already not enjoying that, and then you're adding the weird stuff the weird stuff and I can see why they would have revolted against this. I mean, the cat mousing was a little uh, weird. I was like, oh, kitty. Oh, and I, I get there's changes and <laughs> yeah. that's not Lynch's fault because again, it was not his fault that they chopped that all they that chopped stuff it up. up. But I don't know. It, it's those touches that make it kind of his. Yeah. But, but I also like wanted to be faithful to the book. Don't forget. If they had the touches in addition to a more faithful story. Sure. I will say I love Everett McGill. Oh, he Ever is Miguel's not fantastic. how I pictured Stilgar. <laughs> Stilgar in the other two is more how I pictured him. Yeah. 
Like, Stogar is this, like, tough, like, yeah. angry guy. You don't think Ever McGill's a tough, angry guy? Well, like, he's smiling all the... He's, like, real thrilled to be there. He's like, hey, well, what's up, He's just, like, happy guys? to be alive. Well, he's yeah. happy because he's like, Moa Deeb, check him out. He's too happy. Do we have worm sign? Lucian, we have worm sign, the likes of which even God has never seen. He's got to be more hesitant at first. He's, He's like, oh, hey, what's up? Your more. name's Uso. It'll be the base of the He's going to make it rain on Arrakis. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Dune always boils down to how good are their sandworms. Yes. I love the design of the sandworms. I think I think they look the best. The execution. Yeah, I will say effect, that. Yeah. The execution is hit or miss. It, it's puppets. sometimes, it's, exactly. yeah, but sometimes it's like it, they're too puppety. It's like it's like watching a Godzilla movie. It's like I know that this is not a giant monster, but this is a movie that wants me to think it is, and yeah. it's got a big. But this is trying to be Star Wars. You can't show me some sock puppets that don't look real. I'm also here for it though. And the green screen I is terrible too. for when they're riding it. Uh, uh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it it looks a little rushed for sure, yeah. but I think again, like. Oh, the biggest change, I forgot. They got rid of the weirding way, the space karate, and they made weirding modules where they have the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the like, thing is, yeah. they're using a lot of guns in this, yeah. but in the Dune universe, they're... you have laser guns, but they're not really useful because if they hit a shield, it causes like an uncontrollable explosion. Sure. So that's why they use knives and stuff mm -hmm. in this, but this movie, so they're like, make it like Star Wars. Yeah, no. <laughs> so Basically. He's got to, uh, you know, Amawadib's got to uh, bring balance to the force. Oh, my God. Oh, that's the other big change. Sorry. I was going to my final thought before I did that. The whole, like, the prophecy is planted by the Benny Gesserit. That too. Thrown out. He's literally it space is. Jesus. It's right there from the beginning. Well, he is no. space Jesus. Well, they do say it in the beginning, though. It, they just speed it up. So you're not a getting little bit. But no, not, like, not, he literally makes the sky rain at the end. I know, but you're he not does. getting the exposition of his growth. And that's the problem. Yeah, for sure. But they um, still say it in the beginning. They're like, they're like, oh, he's the, the you know, the Quasar Hatterack. Yeah. He, he's the one Jessica birthed a boy. So the worms are good. That was a really uh, good, they remind uh, me a little bit Benny of a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will say Aaliyah I was, doing was the really voice. good in this. This is my favorite Aaliyah, yeah. the little young girl. Yeah. And she's creepy. Oh, yeah. she's fucking. Creepy. She's really creepy. She's supposed she's to be creepy. creepy. Yeah, she's definitely yeah. creepy in this. I would say the sandworms just, it just when I saw them, it reminded me of Beetlejuice. Yeah. I mean, like, I love the comparison of all the sandworms in sci-fi movies, like in Tremors. Yeah. And uh, big, and Tremor, big Tremors vibes, I think, pulled from this for sure with the oh, vibrations yeah, and all that. Did. And Same I will say the action's not oh, great, but I don't think Lynch is the best action director. I think it's fine. It's fine. Is it I, am, I almost said I fine and you fun. Did. Oh, I heard that. It is fun. I have a good so time finally, when I see Patrick Stewart and, yes. and uh, Kyle McLaughlin go at it. I prefer Excuse these me. fighting than the miniseries. Okay. This, it goes uh, the newest one for fighting, then David Lynch, and then the miniseries. Sure. How did you feel about the space slave owner cutie fans all being redheads? Is this what I'm going to get the entire goddamn <laughs> episode from a fucking latex loser? <laughs> Whoa, this is my still suit. <laughs> it's the only way I can breathe. It traps the moisture from the body in these little pockets, and then the feces God, is I packed would... here. Mm -hmm. How uh, much moisture is being kept in there I will right say now? the blue eyes were okay. For blue a eyes movie. are good, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think the blue eyes were that bad in any of them. No. It wasn't no. like horrific. Well, it was like traditional like roto effects. Yeah. yeah. So one I final like. thing I want to say about Dune 1984. If you do want to see, because there is a TV version that's expanded, but yeah. Lynch hates it because it's edited all weird and he it's it's got the Alan Smithy credit on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, he won't return to do this. He won't return to re-edit it. I don't blame so him. So fans took it upon themselves to get all the deleted scenes they could and then find the like script as it was written and put the scenes where it is. And I don't want to say where you can find it, but it's very easy. It's called like the Spice Driver edition. Mm -hmm. It's like three hours, but it's like a quick three hours. Yeah. Like it finally, it's like after you read the book, like and watch the movie, like, oh, wow, he did kind of get a lot of it right. It just, was I like how you say him. it's a quick three hours after I just spent, was it, at least 15 hours, over 15 hours of Dune. I'm it just like, I don't know if I could do another three hours. I would go back for feel, this one. It doesn't feel long, though. Like oh, it flows well. Yeah. So I think, he, I think you, I don't like it as much as you. I have a soft spot for it. I'm I don't biased, think it's a great so. movie, but I do think mm -hmm. a lot of the hate and stuff that Lynch gets is unwarranted because he Agreed. did have a solid film that yeah. was more faithful to a degree that was Rothwell. He, he tried to make it as faithful to the book as he could. 
So. And yet in his yeah. own style, which is nice. With it, yeah, yeah, with his own spin with on it, sure. But it, it, was, have... it was fun. It showed this ridiculousness. Yeah, and it's I think early that in the career. It. It's yeah. early in his career. Oh, Toto did all the music. Yeah, and Toto did. By the way, all three, I like the music in all three versions. It's fucking, it's, well, I got the soundtrack right here. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, the profit, the profit theme is really good. Oh, it's so good. Um, yeah. So that is David Lynch's Dune. Just feels cozy. Moving on. Dune. Frank Herbert's Dune, the Sci-Fi Channel miniseries. John Harrison's Frank Herbert's Dune. Hey everyone, stopping the video for a second. Just have a real quick message. If you really like Lynch's Dune, uh, you should check out Peg Warmers, our uh, friendly podcast about toys. I've been on it. Johanna's been on it. A bunch of people from the show have been on it. This week, they are going to be covering Dune toys from the Lynch film, uh, and it's going to be very, very exciting. Uh, Kevin's friends from Farpoint are going to be on there. The Farpoint guys are always awesome. And yeah, check it out. They got some really cool toys from the movie, and I think you're going to like it. Now, let's move on to Frank Herbert's Dune. And who is John Harrison? John Harrison is the composer of Creepshow. Ooh. And the director of Tales from the Dark Side and multiple episodes of Tales from the Dark Side. And well, the Tales from the Dark Side, the movie. He just did a bunch of stuff for Creepshow, mm. the new series. He's directed a bunch of stuff. Yes. Thank you so it, much for telling me about the Tales of the Dark Side on freaking DVD. <laughs> Thank oh. you. I'm going to tell you that all the time. Like, I am so happy I got, because I was trying to find it online. It was so mm -hmm. hard to find. And I was like, I think you're, yeah, you're the one that told me just go on DVD and get, I was like, done, it's It's done. been hard to find. And also, shameless plug, it. we're covering the entire Tales from the Dark Side series <laughs> on our show, Talks from the Dark Side, Movie Dumpster spinoff. Great Love segue it. about hard to find things. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember, like I said, this movie was really hyped up in yeah. the 2000, like early 2000. I just like, fucked up my nose ring. Oh, well. okay. I got take really a, excited. Take a I second. got really excited. Now it's cool. I'm just going to not touch it. You sure? <laughs> Take two seconds. You sure? Mm -hmm. Right. Whatever. It's fine. I'm good. You sure? Keep going. Segway. You yeah, can see us with stupid fight. shit in our nose. Well. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, yeah, it was really, really hyped up. Like I think I said earlier, I remember seeing previews for it in movie theaters. It won Emmys. I think it won an Emmy. An Emmy? Yeah. Oh, I guess for like best like miniseries or whatever. Maybe at the time. Yeah. Um. But no, it was like a really, really big deal because huh. again, that movie, fans weren't happy with it. Sure. Uh, so they really, they really went for it, didn't they? They yep. were like, hey, we're going to make it smart. And the new movie took a page from this. Like, let's not cram this into two hours. Yes. Let's break this up. The book is broken into three parts, so it actually makes sense. It It's smart to do this. It's also a pretty long movie we didn't mention for, like, 1984. You know it's what I mean? two hours and 17 minutes, it's yeah. It's pretty long. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the 2001, uh, I remember seeing all the average. Uh, that shot of the sandworm coming up and the thopter flying away from it was so fucking cool. I thought that was so awesome, but I, I never really got to experience it because I could never find it on at the right time. So I always saw bits and pieces until recently where I finally sat, found it on YouTube because it is impossible to find. On YouTube? No, no. It's impossible to find a physical copy of this in America. Like you can find like a Blu-ray that's region two or whatever, but this was such yeah. a big deal. It was released on DVD. You cannot find the DVDs. Tony and I were talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I remember seeing it in like Suncoast. Yeah. And it, it it sat there for years and I never picked it up for whatever reason. Yeah. But, but like, now you can't get it at it's all. It's never been re-released. I found a copy on Facebook. It did not come in on time. <laughs> I found a copy. Why of, do you keep ordering things that don't come in on time? I thought it would come in on time. <laughs> it's, it's, literally, it's literally, it's literally according to, like <laughs> according, like according to the tracking, it's coming in tomorrow. <laughs> um, all right. Look, I got. Wait. Can you please send us that so we can get some nudity, please? Oh, yeah. Well, don't what was spoil all that? that? Anyway, those, I can't help those, it. They put those the shields worst. from the 284 <laughs> over all the boobs <laughs> and butts. So Thick, thick sensor block. So I, I, even see found, the outline of I the found the DVD on Facebook Marketplace. Some lady <laughs> doesn't realize how rare it is, which is why I love Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> Um, bought it real cheap, but the tags, I was talking to you on the phone, actually. I'm like, yeah, yeah the, here, I have it here. Because I wanted to give you the price of what I paid yeah. for it. And then I saw the tags. It was like, Dune, DVD, huge worms. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, who was 
typing in huge worms <laughs> into Facebook Marketplace. They're like, oh, there was a there was a 2000 Dune movie. <laughs> You're going into like dark web territory. Yeah, right? yeah you are. <laughs> but well, yeah, it's just so not readily available. Yeah. However, some genius did upload all three parts of the YouTube. Mm. Uh, who, who released it? Was it Artisan? Yeah, Artisan. And they went under, and who owns the rights now? Oh, maybe that's... You know what's funny? I think one of the Blair Witch tapes I was, like, transferring, and mm -hmm. at the very end oh, of the tape, <laughs> there's an advertisement for Dune on DVD. <gasps> Stop. Yeah, I thought that was that's bizarre. That's funny. Um, look at, the, like, the old advertisements yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they went really, really out on all out on this. They filmed it in Czechoslovakia. There's a lot of Czechs in it. Oh, big time. Um, K and B works on it too. Yeah, I think they made specifically the navigators, and then they're like, "All right, that's exactly. what we're gonna do." Um, yeah. What did you, for? What are your guys' thoughts on this version? It's definitely accurate to the book uh, with changes. They all have changes. None of them yeah. are perfect. But none of all the you can't just take a straight book and have every single thing. You have to have your own little no, which I'm fine with. Yeah, especially when it's spice. It's the reason for your spice tends to change, and it also yeah. creates a different type of atmosphere in the story. Yes. I really enjoyed these a lot. It I did It was too. easier to understand what was happening for the first time. I don't know if it's because I did watch the David Lynch version first, but it was much clearer, but it was also a little bit more blunt. Yeah. It was more in your face, uh, exactly what was happening. There wasn't really as much artistic style. Although there are much, some of the dream sequences are really sound. cool. Yeah. Like I like when uh they show like the guys in robes chanting Muad'Dib and then yeah. the camera moves like and it's in the the Baron's office and he's having a nightmare and then they're oh, gone. I thought yeah. that was real cool. I do say there's more trip trippy aspects in the episodes probably, mm. especially when he goes into or especially Jesco when she goes into what is the, like the water that? of life, the water yeah. of life when she drinks but the she water of life. Couple, they do that a couple times where they're yeah. in that universe and stuff like that. There's so many of those trippy moments, but for even sure. Lynch because, even has Oh yeah, well, big time. And you, I think you need it for this kind of movie, uh, especially because, like, well, first I want to say that like, the minutia of the politics in this is so, now we have more time to explore all of that. Yes. yes. Not only not only the politics of the situation between the Harkonnens and the uh, Atreides and and the uh, Emperor. But also explore characters and their relationships to each other. Like we get a lot of time with Jessica and Leto, and like what their relationship is like, yeah. and how that's affecting Paul, and how it's affecting the deal that they're making, and and the stuff with the Harkonnens, and mm -hmm. I, it, it just lets it breathe a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, there's other characters put back in that were obviously cut from Lynch's version, yes. and their arcs and all that kind of stuff. You just get a little bit more time with everybody yeah. and with the overall story. So it lets you breathe a little bit, especially when it's broken in three chunks. Which was smart. Yeah. yeah. Which was smart. You really care about these characters, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You yeah. really do. You understand them more and the reasoning of why they live that way. And it makes it a little sadder, too. It yeah. makes it definitely more of an intense movie. To where you're like, you really feel for all the characters almost. Exactly. You get to know them a little bit better and feel for them a little bit better. Well, I whereas feel for Baron, in but... like Lynch's version, like we're it's... very focused on Paul. And it's yeah. very, and again, it's like they're speeding it up. Yeah. They're, so yeah. Like, even with Paul, we're not really learning a lot because no, they're just skipping. We're already, yeah. yeah. So Dean Stockwell, by the way, I just remembered his Dean name. Dean Stockwell, Dr. that is his name. He was Dr. Ua. Dr. Ua. Um, yeah. So a bunch of the, the things they changed, the big changes. Uh, which this is one that you like. They expanded the subplot of Princess Uralon. I love that, that and the so Emperor. much. She's such a freaking badass. She just comes in. She just has this energy where it just, I felt like the movie needed it. Yeah. No. Because it's, it made sense, especially someone in the Emperor's world, almost not a traitor, but an insider. Yeah. Because yeah. I wouldn't call her a true, like a traitor, so, but she has a good heart. Like she's, She's not an idiot, and she's the only heir. Like she's already trying to like show, like, I'm sorry, I I wasn't a son, but I'm still even more powerful than you think. Yeah, totally. And and we get a lot more of the emperor and her relationship played by uh, Giancarlo, the Giannini? guy from Mimic, yeah. right? The guy from Hannibal, the guy from yeah. Mimic, who is one, yeah, Mr. And, emperor <laughs> Funny Shoes, and yeah. all the uh, what you call all the Italian films that Trisha loves that actor. Oh, he's great. So yeah. when we did Hannibal, she's like, I love him, yeah. not in this. <laughs> Just, so I sent her, I mentioned the episode. I'm like, I'm actually watching Dune. He's in it. So I sent her a picture of him in a ridiculous in outfit. Purple, she's like, in purple she's like, what is he wearing? <laughs> but, Famous Italian. I do like that the emperor of the known universe was Italian. That was a great change. Mm. Um, a spice. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
They do love a spicy. They do love oh the spicy God. meatballs. So uh, now the emperor, the, the expansion of their storyline, two reasons. I mean, you got Giancarlo and you got to play this in Europe. Sure. You're going to want to use them. Yeah, because the emperor yeah. doesn't. So, so he doesn't do book, shit in Dune. Like, it, yeah. well, in the 84 he's one. There. He's there. In the book. Well, in the book, he doesn't show up until the end. Yeah. And Princess Irulan, you see Irulan, excerpts from it. books that she's written throughout the book. But when she shows yeah. up at the end, she's just there. And Paul's like, I'm going to marry you just so uh, I can be the next emperor. And she's like, all right. But that's also it. I mean, it is important because that's what her. Yeah. His but dad did. it's just kind of like, and actually in the deleted scene with Virginia Madsen and Lynch, yeah. is, he's like, you will be my wife. She's like, what? Yurulan shall be my wife, opening the way for Anatreides to take the throne. <laughs> but like, well, that's kind I'm of, emperor now. So I guess, I guess they were like, hey, wait a minute. Since the book was written, there was this whole thing called feminism. I'm <laughs> sure someone rolled their eyes and said, oh, I know. But they had like, all right, we got to do something. So they were like, all right, let's make Princess Irulan like in on it and on the entreaty side. So when it happens, it's not like you're my wife now, woman. Yeah. She's like, okay, she was, it was part of it. And I just love like the, the, with her relationship and, with the Baron and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. When she goes in with Frey and stuff like that. Yeah. And, she has and her, the reason, again, the reason they did it was because she's important in the sequel. So they wanted to build her up and they did do a sequel. Sure. Well, she does come back in mm -hmm. Children of Dune. Um, it also connects her to Paul a lot more, yes, especially with that banquet scene where they get together. They're drinking the spice which is, beer, I, which is the one scene oh, Frank Herbert yeah. wanted. That's scene. That is my, when she goes up, when he drinks it first, they're like, oh, it's going to go to your head. Yeah. He tries to be cool too. Yeah. She's like, ah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I can I, hang with the rest of them. That was one of my favorite yeah. scenes out of all of it. And then also, and it also shows the maturity of those two when um, their guards come. And it's mm -hmm. like, okay, well, let us be the adults the here. Yeah, the example. Yeah. They merged uh, some character storylines. Like I think Thufer, Thufer just disappears. The Mentat, he's just gone. After that first attack, I don't think we ever see him again. Uh, well, hey, he's screaming and running around. And, yeah. and uh, I don't what, think we ever see him again. No, A lot of his stuff is given to Gurney. Yeah. Gurney's uh, my, f this is my favorite Gurney. Yeah, um, I, mean, I did love Patrick. But like, yeah, I kind of like all the time. Is all blah, 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 blah. And, uh, and, but he just plays this character like he's more lovable in this. Yes. He's like a drunk grandpa in yeah. this. That's and what he's this, this is the something. only one that grandpa. doesn't cut Playing his out fucking loot. his ballast, <laughs> yeah. the ballast set. The ballast, excuse this me. This is the only yeah. one that doesn't cut it out. Yeah. But uh, there's a great line, though, yeah. saying like, oh, um, you know, a good part when the, um, they're good at swordsmanship or oh, something oh, like that. Uh, he, the only, his reputation only precedes him on the, val what is it called? Ballast set. On the ballast, ballast set, set besides his sword knife skills or yes. whatever. Yeah. So there is a scene where uh, Gurney, uh, the Duke... Paul and uh, Liet mm -hmm. are all hanging out in the Lynch version, and he's playing the ballad. Yes, that's right. I can't, he holds yeah. the ballad set in one scene, but he never plays it. They cut it out. And the new version, which we're going to get to, what's his face? Thanos. Uh, <laughs> Josh, yeah. Just call him Thanos. Uh, Josh he, Brolin. <laughs> he apparently plays the ballad set, and I think they cut that out. So this is the only version that has not cut out a ballad set so Keep far. Keep the ballad set. So yeah, they have that there. Um, the, Mentats, the Mentats' lips are no longer red. Mm -hmm. They just have nothing. Fuck it. Yeah. Uh, Paul is everything's, older. Everything's very clean in this, too. Which I didn't mind. Yeah, I mean, it's a little... After, again, after coming off this, everything's so polished and, like, not as mm. artistically striking. So I'm mm. like, hmm. Well, Paul not, is... I do like the costume. I know we have a different opinion on, like, the co I do like the costumes, especially for the party scenes. Some of them are cool, but mostly I'm kind of like, hmm. I think the the more exaggerated ones mm. in the movie I really liked, like the big. I did like the, the mother, uh, the rev, mother, the rev, reverend rev, mother, yes. reverend mother. She has these crazy like wings. I liked that, mm -hmm. um, and I did really like uh, the the emperor's daughter's costumes a lot because yeah. it showed more of her personality as well. Sure. Um, one of the other things is Paul is older again. Mm -hmm. And he's still kind of space Jesusy, but not as a, he's not a as much as fucking last one. whiner in this. He is a little bit of a whiner. Baby. A lot of I was reading like fans were kind of like they didn't like his kind of like uh, standoffish attitude. I didn't like it either. I've been told that about me. <laughs> um, I did like him a lot though in the fight scene with um, the one uh, Jameis. Uh, yeah, yeah. I Th that was a good I scene. thought he did really well yeah. in that scene though because it did show like oh when you take a life it affects her or what does he say. It says basically like, hey, if you kill someone, it's going to fucking affect you. Yeah, yeah, because he had never killed anyone before, yeah. even though he was in training he, and he's it, supposed yeah. to still be only 15 or whatever. Because I think in a lot of the version of the book and whatnot, they're like, why is he playing around? It's like, no, he's he just doesn't he, he doesn't hasn't know. killed yet. Yeah. yeah. And it's also like yeah. yield. And he's like, 
What are you crazy? Like, no, like, no, this is to the death. What are you talking he about? He probably should have yeah. asked for all the well. rules before he accepted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the Baron. Okay, well, he's still having sex with the slaves, but they made sure they were of age slaves. Uh, let me tell you something. In this one, too, like it's Woo. it's much more on the nose than even Lynch's version. Because by, by the way, I'm going to say it fucking right now. This is the best Baron. Fucking Ian McNeese is the Baron. He is chewing the scenery. He's having so much fucking fun. He's great. He is so awesome in this. Like he's he like has a good giving it his he has all. A really good bear. He's flying around. He's dressed like a leather daddy the when he doesn't man. have his thing the on. Flying fat man. <laughs> yes, I do like that they included that. He is that a scene. leather daddy in yeah. this. The red leather he's a, daddy. Uh, he's a kimono daddy in this. Yeah, Woo! I do like that they added the scene where Fade tries to assassinate him and fails, and yeah. like. Because that's from the book where he's like, Fade, you had so many opportunities. Why'd you do it now? He's like, and you just didn't do it. He's like, can you not try to kill me yet? I'm trying to do something here. Yeah. And then you can take over. Like, can you fucking relax? I'm trying and to like watch Ace Ventura pull this slinky down these giant yeah. flight of steps. <laughs> and Frey is so upset. Like, he's like, you're not going to do anything to me. He's like, if I wanted you to kill, I would have had you kill before you got through the hallway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and I have here the last big change. Uh, I don't know if this was ever really mentioned in the book, but everyone has a silly hat. Now, can we talk about the Space and Guild? Because they're my favorite goddamn thing in this movie. Really? And they're pointy black hats and the guy... What do they do? Yeah, they're... <laughs> I love... They're raving, dude. You don't understand. Is that what it is? There's a scene, the end. <laughs> There's a scene later where, like, I think the Emperor and the Reverend Mother walk in and the na the guild, not the Navigator, the guild, the Space and Guild guy is just standing with just on one leg with his leg up in the air. <laughs> and he's like... They're fucking weird. I'm missing that big that big microphone right about now, dude. They're both weird in different <laughs> ways. But no, you're right. The the main navigator, or not oh God, the main guild guy, yes. he is overacting like crazy. And he really went for it. Really went for it. I mean, he committed. Everyone he really went committed. for it. The very end. I love the very end. When they're it. like, hey, we space and guild, yeah. you're going to do this. And he goes, the guild does not take your orders. <laughs> and then they're walking away like this is the end. At no point does anyone go like, oh my God, how do we let those guys get so much fucking power? <laughs> Whatever. No wonder they want to kill us. Um, I trade. do like the costume design in this. I don't hate it. It's okay. The still suits look more how I picture them in the book, not sure. just, I mean, not cool like this. It, but it's, it's also a whole mask now. Yes. Uh, that they use well, for the. I think, uh, yeah. the I think they thing. mentioned they did have mask and the nostril. I think yeah. they had both, but for whatever reason, that movie just went with just nostrils. Hmm. Um, There's no like head wrapping or anything. Yeah. yeah. The sets are beautiful. Some of them. The practical sets are beautiful. The Some of the practical sets are. Yes. The um, CG is fucking god awful. The CG is not yeah. aged well. There's some good shots with the sandworms. Maybe. But particularly that first sandworm attack. On the rock? Or before, or, or when they're when they're going the, the spice the, 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 the spice, spice miner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the first time you see a worm. Yeah. yeah, that one's okay. But yeah, they look, it was TV budget. It was I new. Get it. I get it. It has not aged well. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of forgive it at the time. You kind of forgive it. I like Lynch's space. Actually, I like his space room the best. Actually thinking about that. Yeah, it's way better than mm. the miniseries. This one does the roar from the Rancor. At one point, it's um, the Rancor's it, roar. It almost, it, no, what it is, is the it's uh, partly like Jurassic Park dinosaur sounds, well, which I is like the, the dolphin. Well, I think the also used else. a little bit of the Rancor roar, Did it too. really? I think so. I mean, maybe it's possible. Um... It's, def it's definitely not like LM, ILM or whoever no, the fuck was not. mixing it Jurassic Park. Because it is not. Yeah. But I mean, it's the CGI could be a little bit better. The, the worms now, look the best out of everything. Yes. It, that are now, yeah. so they couldn't green screen a lot of the set. They made a big desert set, like a big sound stage with the sand and like a painted backdrop of yeah, dunes. The matte painting, yeah. Not the most convincing. Not the most convincing. You can kind of tell, like, oh, they're back in the sand room. But, I mean, what else were they going to do? I'll take yeah. that over bad CGI any fucking day of the mm. week. Really. It depends. It depends. I, I, there's just something about it that I like. Like, just the yeah. practical aspect Just the practical, it, yeah. like, that that huge, like, matte fall off uh, of, like, you know, the horizon and then just, like, some practical I guess I guess shit. it's hard when it's just the desert. You can't put, like, things to... It's, not it's like also, if it was, like, a forest, you could put some trees up, well, but... Yeah. 
but it's also like it's probably expensive to go shoot in the desert and yeah. and you know it's hot as fuck yeah, yeah that's another <laughs> it's just thing. i started recognizing the same background i'm like oh but they also like room. they travel at night. Like, yeah, how yeah. else are you gonna film like yeah. that? It, that's got to be fucking real difficult. Yeah. So much happens during the different times of day. I thought it looked fine. I like the yeah. little sand caves yeah. and stuff that they're in. I, I uh, actually like. I think one of my favorite parts of this was though um, when Beast comes and actually kills. Oh yeah. That kill versus any of the other time. I don't. I don't remember Lynch's having that kind of kill. No, the baby the, kill or wait, no, not the baby kill. The ceremonial the cer- kill where he takes the ceremonial oh, dagger yeah. and fucking and, and one of and the executes uh, everybody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think he just does it to one guy. No, he kills them all and he sends an email to the Baron and he's like, "Look, Fade, your brother <laughs> killed he everybody. Did the Isn't that one. nice?" I don't remember the other ones, but I remember the one and the kids were watching. Yeah, yeah. it zooms out and the Baron's watching it and you see yes. on the video and he's oh, just that's stabbing right. he's like doing all the of other them. Ones. Yeah. That's right, he is, and he doesn't. He's like, and then he's like, "Yo, look, this is what your brother does," yeah. and that's the scene of saying, "Oh, we're gonna send you in, and yeah. you can take your brother's head and right. be the savior," which is hilarious because they, in the end, take his goddamn yeah. head. And yeah. I was like, "Yes!" <laughs> and they actually show it. Where's the Lynch version, it's like, yeah, we killed him. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. That was the only violence that I think I liked in this version. It was brutal. Because it, that, yeah. Yeah. But the thing is, it was slow, and it was clean, and it was crisp, but what was happening, all the other fight scenes were just so fake and forced. I mean, me. they like, tried that. They tried to do the space karate where yeah. he's like teleporting. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I like the guns better in that. In the, mm. I like the voice guns better in that respect. The the only okay fight scene, I think, is the one where Fade's like uh, sparring with that dude and he like oh, the, the other shit gladi- out of him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That one was good. That, that was yeah. good. Yeah. So, yeah, I... Oh, and no, we forgot to mention, like, William Hurt is the Duke in this. Yes, he is. He's, like, the biggest actor in the movie. Mm-hmm. He apparently really liked Dune. He yeah. just really wanted to be a part of it. He was good. He was good, yeah. Yeah, he was good. Um, Jessica's great in this. Yeah, way. Jessica's yeah. really, oh, really good in favorite. this. this. Yeah, she's probably my they favorite cut favorite out. Jessica. So certain yeah. scenes got cut out because of the Prince Zirulan thing, and where they escaped their captors and the Thopter, that... Yeah, that's just not in They're it. just in the desert. Yeah, they just, like, dropped them off. And yeah. Like, All right, here you go. Which I, like, I was fine with that. But yeah, overall, I think if you want to get the idea of the book yeah, and you just want to, you got a day to kill, just watch this. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. Fine and fun. <laughs> fine it's and fun silly. Fun it's very silly. It is It is a commitment. The uh, CG is very dated. Yeah. But I think it gets the point across, uh, at least story-wise, better than some of the other ones. It's very engaging. It's very yes. engaging. I say you start, you fall out a little bit, but I think the second episode was probably my favorite. Yeah. You really dive in the characters. You understand the characters. And that whole, the the killing of the worm and that, oh, that one, I just really love that scene. Mm. I, I wish they had it in the Lynch version. Well, they did. It got cut out. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I think those, just the, the lifestyle and that culture of them is so goddamn important that you yeah. just don't get in the other movies. Yeah, you spend more time with the Fremen in this. Because it's so sad. And they kill the baby. So they sad. kill Paul's baby. Yes, they kill the goddamn baby. Well, yes, the there one, anyway. is baby death. Yeah. It just dawned on me that, like, do you think that Lucas went back to the well, back to the Dune book for episode one, two, and three with all, like, that poli- political shit? Probably. It, it It's starting to feel like it. Probably. Especially because, like, it's. It, I've sat down with this for the first time in a long time, and I'm like, Oh my fucking god! Like House of Trades are like the Jedi, <laughs> <laughs> and the Harkonnens are like the clone troopers, and like Emperor's Baron Harkonnen, kind of. He's like the Emperor and Baron Harkonnen, like wrapped into one. Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know. I'm just maybe I'm reaching here, but it, that's the way it feels. Yeah. Oh. So my last thought on this: mm-hmm. the chick who played Cheney was really hot, and I wish she was in more things in America. Bad haircut, but she's beautiful. I was I was into she the is hair. Stunning. And if you don't th- if you don't think I googled Cheney nude <laughs> you, you when I realized when I realized that it was blurred in the yeah. YouTube version, you got another thing coming. I googled that right away. Um <laughs> I will say I wasn't in, too into their fade. Their fade wasn't the great, but the Baron really wins me over He's great. on this. Oh, Duncan Idaho sucks in this. I can't even remember. He's Duncan just there. He, they this. don't even give him his heroic death where he kills all the people. He just gets up hit with a rocket. Yo yo dies. potato he is dies. not in this one. Yeah. They really minimized his whole thing. Yeah. They have the death of Leah Kynes, but they speed it up. But oh, that won't. When they walk, the ex- he- it was the explosion, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. That was very. Oh, felt and this random. Is, and this is the one that explains like how Paul can ex- destroy the spice. He's like, yeah, we're gonna put the water over yeah. this. It'll kill all the sandworms, which make the spice, and you won't have spice. Also, the other version, the Dune one, the the Lynch one. He's just like, 
we could destroy the spice and everyone's just like sure how no one ever explains <laughs> it also because it goes into the the, the, the political minutiae like you see Harkonnens are still on Arrakis mm. and they're yeah. working with the Fremen. Like there there's like uh Harkonnen um assassins and shit. Yeah. And even like they were still there with the Fremen. Yeah. Yeah. You like working with them. But like in, in Lynch's version, it's just like, okay, now Atreides, you know, the House Atreides is on Arrakis and there's no Harkonnen. The Harkonnen like come Well, they're supposed to be gone, but they left some spies. Yeah, yeah. but like Yeah. But it's only the one dude that's already infiltrated them. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, well, do you mean the guild? The guild is definitely working with the Fremen behind no, everyone's the back. Har no, the Harkonnen Harkonnen. are totally. Well, no, they're not friends, but I'm saying they're oh, still okay, occupying okay. Arrakis. Oh, yes, uh, yes, yes, Arrakis. yes, yes, that makes sense. And the guild is They've working with left. the Fremen. Yes. And in Lynch's version, it's just the Fremen doing their own thing on yeah. in, in the uh, the outer rim. Yeah. But yeah, the whole point of this is just how all the world so much politics are involved mm -hmm. and who's involved with what and the fact that like the Emperor like is just Asshole. Yeah. Those stuff with the water is so shitty. That that fucking uh, fountain that's in the middle of uh, oh, and they're like they're like it's not, it's it's a it's a thing. It's a custom. You take the water out, you wash yeah. it, and you dump it on the floor. Even those people are paying for like a cup of water oh, every day. And I day. love when Jessica comes out. No one else is allowed to pay yes. for water. That was a good one. That was good. One final thought. I, I you know I said final thought earlier. Sorry, but this is the, definitely the thing. So they found a cost-effective way to do the blue eyes. They gave him glow in the dark contacts and, with a UV light. And followed him around with the UV light. Followed them around with the UV light. Problem, sometimes the UV light was too close to other actors and you could see the blue oh, on their yeah. face. Or the actors would turn and then the <laughs> eyes are no longer I blue. I didn't notice that. <laughs> they yeah. didn't even bother in the long shots. I'm like, hey, okay. They... It's pretty. It's it fine though. Cloth. It looked cool. It I good. remember seeing the commercials for this thing and the eyes were like the coolest fucking thing. Mm. Uh, but yeah, finally watching it, I'm like, oh, that was a real cute thing that they did it didn't work out 100 percent, but i applaud them yeah. way cheaper than rotoscoping oh for yeah big TV time. budget big time it's very creative <laughs> yes i like it so moving on well i just one last oh god damn it yeah. i used to i used <laughs> to think so it was you i used to think it was you and mcgregor on the dvd cover <laughs> anyway that was so it. now we come to dennis villain uh, uh director that i sometimes like i really like to rival Really I still haven't like seen Rival. that since we've talked about it. I saw Prisoners. Prisoners was really, really yeah. good. Uh, I never saw Sicario. People like really like Sicario. That was him? Yeah. Uh, and then I saw that boring Blade Runner movie he made. <laughs> and I thought that movie was okay. Like a little bit. I'm like, it was whatever. The but then I thought about it. I'm like, I can't really remember a lot from that movie. It wasn't that good. I think I just, I was happy that I wasn't miserable watching it, but now I'm angry because I, I just forgot all of it. Well, I think that's that's how I feel about the new Dune. No, but this I actually liked. It's fine. I mean, it's, it's good, but like, it's also forgettable in my head. It's... Maybe because you're binging all three of them. <laughs> no, but like... but like. Well, you watched this when it came out, I'll right? Get, I, I just saw this. Yeah, I'll get to my final... Well, I'll get okay. to that in my final thought, but like... It's just, I mean, it's what you expect. It's Dune. It's yeah. all the big beats from these past two incarnations with a little, you're going to explain. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I will say, so one thing that this does, it does what the sci-fi channel did. It's we're breaking the story up into parts. Which is which great. Which wasn't the original plan. It which wasn't. Was it? No. no it's were they going to do. It's supposed to be one movie. How, how the fuck were you going to do this in one movie? It there was, was gonna, no wasn't way. Wasn't it going to be like super long? Almost like yeah. three and a half hours or I something? Honestly, I mean, it, it was already hours. like. Yeah. Yeah. Two and a half, yeah. I mean, it's right. It's it's weird how like some movies can be pared down, like Lord of the Rings, and you think it's hard, but yeah, this one, it's like if you're gonna do, you would have to make a it. lot of changes to cut this one down, yeah. and none of the movies seem willing to make those changes because then they're like, well, we want work. all of the characters. <laughs> like people have considered this unfilmable for a long time, uh, but I feel like they're on the right track with this one. Now, this know. one decided, let's just do book one, the first part of the first book. Sure. Which I think was smart. Mm -hmm. I do Because now it actually gives, as someone who just read the book, went through all of these. Read the book? Yes. Ah. Uh, I really liked having the scenes like breathe and spend time with the characters, not like rushing to get to the next scene to make sure, sure we get it all in. Sure. This one really benefits from that. Um, a few things they did change. I'm sorry, Crystal. You are being erased. The Harkonnens went from being all redheads in Lynch's redheads are just to only a few redheads in the sci-fi channel. And now bald. no hair at all. Presto, you're bald. bald. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's another thing. Like they have no identity. They're just bald guys. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I will say, I mean, like 
I mean, they looked evil as fuck, though. Yeah, they did. They the did Baron Batista's Jack- intimidating. Uh, oh, Skarsgård's intimidating. Yeah. You know what Very I mean? much. Skarsgård, yeah. the way Skarsgård is playing it and the way he's talking and stuff, that's how I kind of pictured the character in the book. Sure. But I'd rather him be the funny Ian McNeese. I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah the, the flamboyantly yeah. fiery. Yeah. yeah. And, and like everything else is disgusting. There's Baron. only, there's very, very minimal changes that weren't even wor- worth bringing up, except for Leah Kynes is now a woman. I worked. It's okay. No, hate it. <laughs> No, my whole thing is like the book, like to be real, like the book has a lot of female characters in it. And it's just like There is, which is crazy. I don't, they talk about the school so much, and it's such a heart, like a a staple in this book is that school that they um yeah. they went to. And I and I get and it. You don't hear about that at all. It's all about f- this the women are supposed to be creating this this other world by having these daughters and all those teachings and the learnings. You don't get that. At the Benny the Benny Jesuit, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the like there's a lot of women in the story and I'm like not to say a lot of these words okay. because I'm totally gonna unpronounce, but you guys totally get what You're I'm allowed yeah. to say it and then be like, hey, I'm, it's pronounced this, and you'd be like, but, All right, well that's what you know. And then I'm gonna fuck it's it up totally again, and again, and again, totally and again and again. <laughs> but yeah, weird so words. in this, um like there are a lot of women in the books, and I understand they got Chani in it and they got Zendaya, but then they were like, Oh wait, she doesn't do shit in the first book. Fuck, we need a tough lady. We can't, it can't be the mom. And the mom is tough, but she, we need a, a tough lady who's part of, like, the good guys. Because, you know, Jessica's kind of teetering on that line. Uh, I don't know. She's pretty strong in this Well, line. her whole thing is, like, where do her allegiance lie? To her to the Duke and her son or to the Bene Gesserit? So they, we needed a really good lady. And they're like, well, we're changing Leah Kynes to a woman. And then they get killed by a worm instead of the spice explosion. I now. liked that. I think, it was, I think I it's fine. Like that because it was under her control. Yeah. Yeah. She determined that. She goes, fuck this shit. Well, I'm not gonna have them kill her. her. Well, yeah. that's what but she, yeah. she Thumper. Yeah. No, uh, yeah. No, Thumper. Thumper is what calls the worm stopters on the planes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But no, she yeah, she was just banging on the ground. That's yeah. what she was doing. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she get the worm to come over and said, Fuck it. I'm they're going with me if I'm going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. I, I will say I really like the visual style in this. I think it looks good. Look, yeah. there's no there's no way this wasn't gonna look gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. I and I'll be the first one to tell you it's it's these long sweeping shots. Um, everything is very, very beautiful. Uh, yeah. What is it, Caladan? Caladan, Caladan the, the, is the, gorgeous. Oh the water, gosh, the yes. water planet where the yeah, Atreides yeah, are from. Yeah. Everything really is really beautiful. I love yeah. the Imperial ship that comes down. It's like an oval. Yeah. I thought that was really it cool. It looks great. It's a little too earthbound for me. It's yeah. not weird enough for me. No. Only because this is stuck in my head. I mean, it kind of looks like that, just on a bigger budget. Uh, sort of. Maybe not the no. ships, but I mean Caladan I and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know. Um, I don't, I, I think this is, has such more of a serious, beautiful tone to it. It's a totally different it's feel. It's a totally yeah. different yeah. feel. Yeah. It has, you don't get the trippy feels as the other two movies have no. at mm. all. Although no. I do no. like what they do with dreams. the dreams in this. I, I, like I don't it too. think so. I don't think the dreams were, if I'm comparing them. I do not think the dreams are trippy enough. Well, well, I don't think it needs At to be all. trippy. The, the whole point is, so like the dreams. The dreams he, are different in this. They're not even Because he is dreams. the Quizart's Hatterack. I'm going to explain it. Because he is the Quizart's Hatterack. Yeah. Or Quizart's Hatterack. Quizart's Hatterack. The Quizart's Hatterack. So basically him, and this is like what the navigators do and a lot of the other people who take the spice. They're able to. Balls. They're like, able yeah. to like see the future, basically. Sure. Predict the future. They hallucinate. Yeah. But. I like that it's this movie show this movie this movie is the first one to be like he's not space Jesus. Uh it's not a hundred percent and his skills aren't a hundred percent because no. I like, I really like at the end, like he's having visions that he's gonna be really good friends with this guy, Jameis. He's gonna teach him how to ride the sandworm. Yeah. But when he meets him, the opposite happens. So he's like, Okay, I do have this ability, but I haven't focused on it yet. It reminds me of Garnet from Steven Universe. I don't, I don't know, know what that is. No? You ever hear okay. of, like the Jedi? Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, Some yeah. of them had again. Guy. Again, Frank Herbert was a little <laughs> suspicious. Little suspicious. Got a little bit of force. I can't. You know, the dark side clouds everything. You know. Yeah. Um. This one uses the most shields, and the shields look how I kind of expected them to it look. Looks good. Don't I get like me the wrong. Shield. And I like that they because the whole thing is the slow knife penetrates the shield. Yeah. Which yes. the other movies established, but then there's not a lot of shield fighting in those movies. No. Here, there's, there's a ton not. of shield fighting, but they show like. 
like Jason Moe be taking guys out, but then he has to slow down yeah. to get yeah. in there. And, and that's a great scene. Yes. That hallway scene. I was just going to say yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Where he, oh, God. oh, this is the he best dunk in Idaho. Ass. Oh, big time. They yes. gave him shit to do. And Loved I'm not even the biggest it. Jason Momoa guy, but they gave him shit as to do. As soon as I saw him, I was like, I don't know. Like, I also, I'm a huge Jason Momoa fan. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, if I watch him in anything. But um, it, it really is the fighting in this, I think is the absolute best. It's, it's, Awesomely choreographed. I don't mm. think the other ones can even compare to this for fighting wise, mm. emotion wise, taking the serious um, plot mm. of like this, all of them. Um, it's just a different vibe that the other ones just don't have. It's not that trippy fun. It's I think it serious. Yeah, I think it has version. the most accurate Paul because he is. I mean, he's in sure. his 20s, but he looks like he's 15. Yeah, I just not even look wise. I think the way he acts, because even with the what's it called? The little bug when they knew that. The oh, the, was the in, hunter seeker. Yeah, yeah. That was probably my favorite Paul scene, because I don't think Paul would be that in the other ones. He's like, oh, don't move. Like, what's it in the. And now I'm getting confused now. The Lynch and the miniseries where it's the uh, one pretty of the, the mates. Scene. Shout yeah, out Mates much. comes in. Yeah. 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 And, and I know this thing, she saves the one. Except, except in but, Lynch, he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, I saved your life. She's like, yeah. oh my God, you saved my life. And in, in the miniseries, he's like, what are you fucking stupid? You almost yeah. died. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But in this one, it's it's not as, I don't even know what I'm trying to say here. He's, he's, it's, he's not as, uh, um, he's not Thank as douchey. You. It, well, well, he's definitely not, not a douche yeah. or as douche. But he's a little bit more not as mature about it. He's not I, as yeah, masterful. I see what you're saying. He's yes. not as masterful with it in yeah. this. He's, he's not still as learning. Ma- exactly. Yeah. He's more in all the other ones, I feel like he's a he just automatically learned and he's good and he's good and he's good. And I know that's an aspect of him where he when he puts on the suit and he knows how to do it. Sure, he might yeah. have some of those. He was also but, trained a lot too, like yes. from from a kid. Sure, to now, he was and he's also a lot, but part he's still, Mentat, part quiz, part uh, Benny Jesuit a little yeah. bit. Oh, absolutely, and he's still. But I like the fact that he's still working on the voice. No, and he sure, doesn't yeah. have yeah. it down packed. Yeah. I yeah. really, I really like uh, Charlotte Ramplin as the uh, Reverend Mother. They never show her face, but this is a chick from Zardoz. Uh, it's great. She's great. She's I, really good in it. Oh, oh, that's what I want to say. Just real quick. Um, we get a lot more time with Jessica and Paul before yes. they even go to Arrakis. And I think that that's to your point about him being a little pig headed and juvenile. Yeah. Those scenes yes. specifically, I think, amplify that or like put it into a little bit more pr- perspective mm. yeah. of where Paul's at yeah. at his maturity level. Like he knows he has this big responsibility to take on, but he's still a kid. Exactly. Yeah. You know what exactly. I mean? And like usual, Thufer doesn't really do much. They gave him a tattoo on his lips instead of the red lips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's drinking out of a straw. And he only, I did like, I did, yeah, I did like the Mentat thing where his eyes go in the back of his head when cool. he's calculating. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. kind of cool. They they decided not to show the navigators. Which is fine. Didn't need to. No. I do like when they show like the, the tube that everyone transports to. You mm-hmm. see like, on the other side of the tube, you see like where space is folded. There's like yeah. another planet. I'm like, that's really cool how they did it. They didn't feel the need to do any light speed stuff. They're like, you get the idea. Yeah. You have yeah. some sci-fi. It's very, uh, maybe maybe this is the word I'm looking for. It's very earthbound. Yes. Yeah. To me. Yeah. And it's very like natural and um, mm. organic looking. Yeah. It's, it's very, I don't feel like I'm on a different planet. Yeah. A lot of the time. It's yeah, very, it's you know kind of hard to do, do you know because what I mean, like though? it's not yeah. like Star Wars. Like the Dune, Dune in the book is like very barren. Yeah. Like no, I get it. I'm just I'm just talking about like some of the costumes and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I wasn't too crazy on the costumes. Yeah. I like the still suits, but like the that weird armored suit, I didn't really like. Uh, yeah, but even even like in House of Trades and like all of the um, set designs, they're pretty. Yeah. But they don't necessarily feel otherworldly, is my point. No, yeah, it's more I was natural. I yeah. didn't really like the look of. I want to live on Caladan. Yeah. All right, in a fucking in a hobbit hole on oh, Caladan. Absolutely. I didn't really like the Harkon and stuff in it as much. Um, no, they were very evil look. I like Piter. I like Piter in it, <laughs> but uh, it's also very I like Piter. Muted. Yeah, I guess is maybe it is a better. Way what do you think is what they were going those for? Bright yeah. colors. Those yeah. other two have so much bright colors. They're very this distinct is... and memorable, and it's just a big black and gray kind of thing. When we get to I like don't, the dark, and maybe like that is one. more accurate, but it definitely isn't as. 
Oh, exciting. but in the miniseries, there's so many nice shots of the desert and the colors. Fade, yeah. who's not even in this movie, Fade's wearing a fucking triangle in the, in the miniseries. Oh, yeah. Dude, he's got it like hanging on he's the back. He's got a triangle on his back. It's like the fucking Pink Floyd cover. Yeah, I like uh, the Beast Raban as Batista in it. I thought he's okay for the minimal. And I think he's the, great. The minimal, he's guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed it. I like where they're going. I think it was smart to only do one part. Mm. Uh, so the sandworms. <laughs> Everyone said they look like buttholes. And when I finally watched the movie, I was looking at it. When it finally comes out in that scene where it's staring a pole, I'm like, that doesn't look like a butthole. It looks like an eye because their teeth are like. It looks like an iris almost, how long their teeth are. Yeah. And then the mouth started puckering. I was like, oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, no, there it is. There it is. Now There's I see the it. Booty hole. Okay. So my least Let's... favorite worms. Uh, <laughs> Lawrence, Lawrence, what if we had a monster in the ground with, uh, it was a circle hole, right? And there were teeth in it? And we called it a sarlacc. What do you think? Think that would work? You mean like the sandworms? No, 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 no. Hey, uh, George, George Lucas, you kind of put a worm in an asteroid in the last movie. No, I didn't. I didn't put a sandworm in the sand with just its mouth poking out. Tony! <laughs> Listen, I'm going to shove that fucking bounty hunter down there. <laughs> so, yes, um... Yeah, and the, by the way, the music in all three is good. The music yeah. in this yes. is really, really good. Hans it's Zimmer good. knocked just, it out with this. It's fucking Hans Zimmer, dude. Did yeah. you expect anything less? Y yeah, Amazing Spider-Man 2. We did commentary <laughs> for it. The oh, music, dude, he was asleep. The, the music was, was like... not very good in that. Um, yeah, and uh, I love Rebecca Ferguson. I'll watch her in anything. She's fucking gorgeous. Ah. Uh, um, I do like how if they never did make a sequel, they alluded to things that will happen in later movies yeah. just in case. Yeah. I do I love like that. Fucking I'm all in on them doing space karate in the desert with their gold suits while worms are eating people <laughs> in the background. I'm like, that's what I want to see. That's what we're ready for. I mean, I'm into it. Uh, yeah. It, it, like, it felt forced to me. It's not. Well, no, I mean, that's something he, he is able to predict stuff. Sure. Yeah. But I it's get also it. it's also there just in case they never make a sequel. It's like, well, that's what you would have seen. Yeah, but he has, <laughs> he has foresight in all of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So he's, but remember, he's, the, the, that's the the one I really like that they show that it's not 100%. It's not accurate. Yeah. Sure, like you, um, so you don't I, know if that's going to happen. I ate some spice. Here's a preview for the second part of this movie. Here. Yeah, but then and I do love the very ending. It feels like a Marvel movie where it's like, oh, that guy's riding a sandworm. And then the girl's like, this is only the beginning. It's yeah. like, all right, it feels a little Marvel-y there. To your point, there are there is humor in this. And I'm like, that feels very Marvel. And I don't fucking need it. That probably made, yeah, they probably wanted to put that in the trailer to look more fun. I didn't mind but the little bit of, moments of, of humor. That Oscar Isaac anywhere is, else. Huh? Nowhere else does that happen. It's weird, though, because, like, Oscar Isaacs is fine, but when, again, when they're on Caladan, you get that between, like, Jason Momoa and. The only Paul, one I don't really like is the. Oscar Isaac yeah, kind of. The only kinda. one I don't like is the smile gurney. I am smiling. I'm like, that's a black dynamite joke. Yeah. Uh, smile gurney. I am smiling. You got that from Black Dynamite. <laughs> I just don't feel like these guys are that kind of jokey. Like, no. I feel like I feel like they have very dry mm. humor. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, I didn't they're mind. more like knights. I don't know. Look, it, the, one of the reasons, yeah. like, like, like medieval knights. I don't know. That sounds really weird. But one I, of the reasons original Star Wars does so well is because it was a weird world where you had to learn everything. So putting in some levity and I get it, some humor helped. Whereas the prequels, they didn't do any of that shit. And it's like these are all fucking weirdos. I, I get it, yeah. and, I, and I'm not saying that it's bad. Well, at least Oscar Isaac didn't do a your mama joke. <laughs> Who knows? Did you watch the extended cut? Oh, oh God. Jesus. No, I didn't watch the deleted scenes for this. No. Um, it's going to be interesting how they fit in Fade in the next one since he wasn't be, established in those. I'm so it's gonna curious. Have to be a big they are doing more Harkonnen stuff in I the know, next one. I yeah. know. And they're definitely bringing in Faye. Yeah. Also, oh, something that I thought was curious in this too was like the because they're, the second movie's coming, like when. Uh, when Leto bites the tooth and blows the the poison yeah. gas out, it looks like Baron Harkonnen's dead. Well, yeah, yeah. I think I think in the book he actually like locks every. He's the one who locks everyone in and runs away. But no, I, but he's in the room and yeah. he's even yeah. he's the closest he's ever been. But he had the shield on, so it protected him a little bit. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Wait, I mean, yeah, yeah, any right visual, before he leans in, it's like a second he turns the shield on. Oh, really? In yeah. any visual representation, this is the closest he is to Leto. Yes. And he gets the blown in the face, and he even feign I guess he feigns getting knocked out. I think he it, does like, it a couple times where he can't believe that he's even alive. Yeah, I think it gets he him a little out. bit, but not enough. Yeah. And then I think yeah. he floated away before yeah. it got everyone yeah. else. Also, he's 
he's got like attachments to him, his I suspenders. Get it. I, get it. I think if I remember right, the suspenders were only to help him walk in every single movie. He's like, he flies. <laughs> I'm like, all right, yeah, sure. Yeah, he's Why not? It looks cool. Man. It looks cool. It looks cool I, as I like shit. His, I like his suit that he flies around in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so now that we've talked about all three films. Yeah. Joe. Okay. What do you think is the best Dune? For me, personally. Yes. David Lynch's 1984 Dune. Um, I just like what it does. And it, it's it's a way to get Dune. Like, like I'm ready for some yeah. Dune. And yeah. with a really intense, cool visuals, great sets, great uh, makeups and costumes and things like that. You get the Navigator being all fucking weird. You get mm-hmm. those trippy-ass Lynch uh, dream sequences and stuff. Really like it a lot. I love the VO stuff. It's very it's like a warm blanket for me. Yeah. Um, like almost like an ASMR kind of thing for me. And I'm, I can't believe he went for the inner monologue. No I, one else even attempted I it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love yeah. it. However, that's my favorite Dune. Yeah. What I think is the best Dune for the for for somebody who uh, wants it to be accurate to the book while still being in a, a, enjoyable in a visual mm. medium. I would probably say the new movie. Yeah. Only because it. The miniseries, again, goes into the minutia so much of the political stuff that it kind it drags ass a lot. Yeah, and it's a commitment to watch though that four and a, I think it's like four and a half hours, right? Something like that. Yeah, all together. Each one is yeah. about an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, four so, and a half. So close, yeah. right? Um, and I think they did a really good job with the new one in terms of getting all of that across and make it an interesting and making it um in a digestible, you know, couple hours. Yeah, with a part two. That yes. you can, that is coming. Yes. Are they going to do a? So, you think so you do think part three, or is I, it just part one? It part should two? only be one more movie. I don't know. So you think this is the best, but this is your favorite. This is the, yeah. This is my favorite, but I think I think the new one's the best out of the bunch. Yeah. Okay. Crystal, what is what is your favorite or best or both? I don't have one. I don't. I think every each one brings something completely different to the table that makes Dune special. The first one, you're able to condense it into one movie. And really get what Dune is really short and sweet. I think the second one gets all the details of the book and really you understand the characters and the world really well. But I think the new one is done really well, um, but brings a completely different vibe where it's not a, it's not as jokey, it's not as ridiculous. It brings a different tune to it. I think each one, it depends on almost what mood I'm in, what I mm. want to watch. I think each one has something absolutely amazing that makes Dune Dune. Yeah. <sighs> okay. It's a little rough. I've been waiting all day for this, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's okay. It's hard to answer. So we'll it say is. this is this is a little bit of an outlier. This doesn't technically count. But if you do want to check out Lynch's. Hunt down that special edition. Okay, yeah. Addendum. The only reason I didn't count it was because Lynch didn't physically do it. Yeah. And he never will. But if you can find this, I think it's called the Spice Driver edition. There's like a 4K version. It's pretty easy to find. Um, That is the way you should watch that movie. Sure. There's some weird stuff in there because not all the scenes were filmed all the way through. Mm-hmm. You see a drop in quality with the film grain. But definitely see that for how like it should have been seen. Uh, I like what you said. The uh, the movie, the it's definitely Dune, just sped up. Yeah. Um, I think my favorite. I think it's got to be the miniseries. Yeah. Only because yeah. I I remember being like hyped up with the marketing and stuff, and I'm glad I finally watched it. And I th- the characters are so ridiculous. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I mean, guys, the fucking guild dude. I know. Come on. I know. How do you top that? How do you top the, the Ian McNeese as the Baron He's being great. all gay oh and my funny? God. He's like, great. And uh, look, Cheney's got a nice rack. All right. <laughs> uh, so that's probably my favorite. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh. All right, would However, you- Dune has, the Lynch's has a pug. Multiple. Yeah. Multiple, well, yeah. one pug, multiple bulldogs in the one scene. Um, There's it, one pug and it survives to the end. And I didn't realize that. I'm like, holy shit, that pug's at the end. I'm like, wait, so they were in the desert where they have to wear suits to preserve water and they kept the pug alive? When you see hey, Patrick listen. Stewart running through the desert with the fucking pug in, ah! his, in his steel suit, he's like, oh, and he's like charging it. It's great. 
Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And, in, and the pugs even have their little suits, too. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, Do you prefer the book over any of the movies? Like, well, would you obviously. would you would say, say the book is, the like, book. the best? I'm, I'm saying, like, look, look. It depends what you want. If you want to know the story from the book, uh, then I think the best is the TV series. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. Yes. Yeah. Despite my, I mean, despite that, how they fucking really gave Duncan Idaho the shaft <laughs> uh, and robbed him of his big moment. Um, it's the most no, exclusive. I think, yeah, I think that is the best when we're talking about an adaptation. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, is this like the book? Do I get the story here? Uh, I think the best movie, like from beginning to end, without any studio interference or anything, I do agree. I think it's the new one. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's made accessible to people, like newer people. It does. The effects don't alienate people because no. they look fine. Honestly, yeah. I think the very beginning of it alone, it doesn't go straight into Paul and Jessica. It gives the background first. And yeah. I think that is absolutely needed if you've never seen Dune before. Agreed. That helps, sets the tone, and makes you understand the world you're about yeah. to go into. So yes, I think this is the best made Dune movie. I think the TV series is the best adaptation of the story. And Lynch's is just fun as hell. Oh, it's, yeah. it's fun as hell. But even, even Lynch would be the one to tell you, like, yeah, I don't like that movie. It's fucking shit. I love that he <laughs> says, like, there's something wrong with that film. Like, okay, Lynch. Uh, just real quick on the new one. The art yeah. direction that you were just talking about. Yeah. It's very safe. Yeah. It's very safe in terms of what's what would be accepted to a mainstream audience. Yeah, it's yeah. never. It's not too weird. It, and although I, think, I don't mind that, after seeing all like the Star Wars and Guardians of the Galaxy, no, I don't fine. mind a more toned down no. sci-fi thing. Sure. By the way, uh, uh, Seducious the Prison Planet with the guy throat singing that was fucking awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Where they're sacrificing people and putting blood on the yeah. side of car. <laughs> that was that was fucking <laughs> awesome. awesome. I don't even think they go to. I, I don't think they go to that prison that. plan in the book. They mention it. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, that's fucking all. The guy's I, just like, they're just like <laughs> dipping the thumbs and on the forehead. <laughs> oh, that was so good. What are we? So, best made Dune movie, I think me and you said the new one. Yeah. What did you say? I, I like all three. I can't decide. I do like, oh, I do. God I, damn you. I would say. For the audience now, I think any age would love this movie, can understand it. The new one. Yes. Yeah. I think for a general overall understanding, I guess the new one. Yes. They all have it's, different things. It's, yeah, di it's digestible, but also streamlined. Yes. The yeah. new one is I mean, the best overall. But like I said, book nerds, TV series, Lynch nerds, that one. Yeah. Uh it's just general sci-fi nerds that don't want to get too hit over the head. This one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go Big with that. Yeah. yeah. So there we go. Dune 2021 is technically the best one, even though we personally prefer other versions. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. <laughs> this was a lot of fun, guys. Yeah. I liked I'm it. glad you went on this journey with me. Sorry. I I thought it'd be more fun to talk about all three. It, I thought I thought it was great. And I got to ride a, a sandworm. I got to drink the, light, the water of life. Joe, do you want to ride more sandworms? Yeah. All right. Well, one second. We got to wrap up here. Okay. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Consider joining our Patreon, where I will be reading the terminology of the Imperium. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, my voice is back. I don't know if you can tell, but I got over a sickness, and we filmed three episodes today. He was uh, doing the voice Aww. the whole time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to use yeah. the voice. Subscribe to Hack the Movies. <laughs> <laughs> like, share, subscribe, uh, join us on Patreon, leave us a voicemail or voicemail number, send us some mail. Joe, where can we find you? You can find me at uh, moviedumpsterpodcast.com, wherever you get your podcasts. And now we have a YouTube channel where we're doing it in video, baby. So uh, hop on over to uh, Movie Dumpster on YouTube. So like, subscribe. Uh, Tony was just on an episode, the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation. And you were in my Texas Chainsaw. We did a lot of Texas Chainsaw. We did a Chainsaw. lot of Texas Chainsaw. We got that commentary track on both, on both Patreons. Yes. Got that 10 so bucks. Much. Five Jesus here, five there. Over. There you go. What? <laughs> Crystal, where can we find you? Where you want to find me? Um, you, you can find <laughs> Crystal being on at yeah. Royal Rumble. Uh, I don't <laughs> so know. Find pissed. me online. I don't know. I'm there. I'm around. Someone to. No. You also, can... he's also mad that I got so many Valentine's Day cards too. <laughs> if you guys, and all the cards were like, "Is Tony getting mad that you're getting so many cards?" I had two cards that said that. Is Tony getting pissed off yet? 
<laughs> I was really hungry and I wanted to eat with my good friend Jill. I don't care. So anyway. You get to go. <laughs> that's it from us. You brought me back french fries that gave me hives. <laughs> <laughs> that's it from us. We're going to go ride some worms. No girls allowed. No. Uh, you, you should eaten. read the rest of that book. To um, be honest. No, I actually am really going to read that. And I have the other two as well. The okay. Next two. While but, you're um, doing that, Joe. Let's hit it. Let's hit it. Let's do it. Oh. Joe, do we have worms sign? Tony, we have worms sign the likes of which God has never seen. A worm! Wow! Oh! I have so many things I want to talk about. I'm like going to get off track here. This is the case of a game that was far more popular in Japan than it was in the United States. They never <laughs> went to Mordor. What are you talking about? It's kind of weird. <laughs> but there's real detail. There's like wiring underneath. You know, they're, they're one and done. That's yeah. it. Sold yeah. out. So they're super hard to come by. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him, guys. Bring it back. Here oh, we go no, again. No, Round no, two. No. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page.